While we were sleeping last night, the UK economy faced a major financial crisis, only averted by an extraordinary intervention by the Bank of England. A warning from the IMF, central bank intervention, uh, disorderly currency movements. You would expect the, the combination you just cited um, to appear in a struggling developing country with weak institutions. Some are claiming the UK came close to a Lehman-style collapse. Well, what's actually happened? In the simplest terms, last week, the new government's astonishingly large tax cuts and plans to borrow sparked a collapse in the pound and surge in government borrowing costs. As this chart shows, prices of UK government bonds collapsed, while the yields or the interest paid on them rocketed to levels not seen since the GFC. It's reflecting markets' nerves around the government's ability to repay. These bonds are central to the UK's financial system and influence the price of all other assets, but are particularly key to the stability of UK pension funds. Overnight, those funds were in crisis, and the Bank of England finally declared the market dysfunctional and stepped in with billions of pounds to prop it up. Now, there's not a lot going for the sinking pound. It's at historic lows against the US and a five-year low against the Aussie. Well, joining me now is Commonwealth Bank's Head of Fixed Income and Rate Strategy, Martin Wetton. Marty, thank you so much for your time. Is it overstating it to say the UK came close to a Lehman's event? It would be overstating it to say it was that dramatic, um, but it was certainly one of the most extraordinary things we've seen in quite some years, and certainly in terms of the move in the markets uh, that's something we've actually never seen before, particularly in the UK gilt, which is what they uh, gilt market, which is what's known as their bond market. Why are UK pension funds at the centre of the crisis? UK pension funds are really large, like they are here in Australia, and the way their system is set up is, in the main, most people have a defined benefit, in other words, a final salary pension, whereas here in Australia we're defined contribution. The size of what's called the LDI market, the Liability Driven Investment Market, is about £1.4 trillion. And what that is, it's the way those pensions are paid out at the end of their life to those on a final salary pension. And the investment managers buy assets to solve for that yield that they need. In the main, they're buying government bonds, particularly UK government bonds. It's a UK liability. They may as well buy a UK asset. But they actually also buy things like Australian government bonds too. And what they do as well is they take leverage. Now, leverage is a word we've heard a lot of in the last 15 years, and typically it's something that doesn't end well. So perhaps the reference to Lehman Brothers is pertinent in that, uh, in, in that environment. Mm -hmm. And what has happened is as the... Uh, global bond yields have been rising and, and certainly a lot recently. Um, you've seen the value of those assets fall, but because they've taken this leverage, they take it and they have a counterparty, which is a bank. The banks have been paying them what's called margin for the last few years as yields have been falling. But now as they're starting to rise, the banks have to pay back that margin to the banks. And given that they own all these assets, what they've needed to do is sell assets to pay the banks on their daily margin call. And because the rise this week was so quick and so large, they simply didn't have the amount of cash in place to pay out these margin calls to the banks. So what they've needed to do is take money out of bank deposits. You've seen that happen. They've had to sell government bonds. You've seen that happen, obviously. They've sold equities. And all of that has meant that you've had like a, a flash crash of asset prices. And it meant that the Bank of England had to step in and do something about it. Yeah, in the simplest terms, what's the Bank of England actually done to fix the situation? Well, what they've done is they've come in and bought long dated government bonds. So quite specific. This is the 20 to 30 year part of the UK government bond curve. And they've bought those knowing that that is the product that these asset managers hold in the main. And because the value of them was falling, they wanted to put a floor under it. It meant the, the pension funds didn't have to go and sell those assets to raise cash. So it really cut off this idea that the pension funds have to go and liquidate what are good assets just to meet a margin call. And what's the quantum of money that we're talking about here? I mean, how much is this going to cost the Bank of England? Because they said they're going to keep doing it until mid-October. 
Yeah, so they bought about a billion pounds worth of bonds last night, and that's that's pretty substantial. Um, they'll buy up to five billion per day until that time. Now, you could think that at the end of that period, uh, then what actually happens is the value of those assets start to fall. What happens afterwards? Well, this is where it comes back to what you said in your introduction around the fact that the UK government has decided to go on a fiscal binge at a time when inflation's printing you know, well into the teens. And by spending money to fix up the cost of living, well, ironically, you're just making it even worse. The government's or the, the market's view on what the UK government has decided to do is to sell the pound and to sell UK assets, the, the government bond market, the gilts and their equities. So you'll still have the same problem unless the government does a U-turn on its policies. I mean, the Bank of England was effectively forced into doing the exact opposite of what it wants to do in that it's been trying to take money out of the economy and it had to shove yeah. a heap in and it's going to have to keep shoving a heap in. So what's the outlook for the UK economy here if the UK government doesn't do a U-turn? If they don't do a U-turn, you're just going to get inflation that really you know, continues to pump up here. But you will have a situation where uh, in order to finance themselves... Uh, I, I think there's going to be quite a difficult um, call on the market and it'll be the domestic market that has to buy these bonds. And why are markets all rallying on this? Markets are rallying probably because they've, they were pretty happy with the way the Bank of England responded. Bank of England came in, said that they would buy these bonds and that simply meant that the pension funds didn't need to sell really substantial amounts of assets. Marty Wetton, thank you so much for your time. Thanks very much.